Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read Harry and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chapter 5, Diagonally, page 85 and 86 and 7. <clears throat> Harry took the wand, felt a sudden warmth in his fingers. He raised the wand above his head, brought it swishing down through the dusty air, and a stream of red and gold sparks shot from the end like a firework, throwing dancing spots of light onto the walls. Hagrid wept and clapped, and Miss Ollivander cried, Oh, bravo, yes, indeed. Oh, very good. Well, 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 how curious, how very curious. He put Harry's wand back into its box, and wrapped it in its brown paper, still muttering, curious, curious. Sorry, said Harry, but what's curious? Mr. Ollivander fixed Harry with his pale stare. I remember every wand I have ever sold, Mr. Potter. Every single wand. It so happens that the phoenix whose tail feather is in your wand gave another feather, just one other. It's very curious indeed that you should be destined for this weed when its brother, why its brother gave you that scar? Harry swallowed. Yes, thirteen and a half inches. You curious indeed how these things happen. The one chooses the wizard, remember? I think we must expect great things from you, Mr. Potter. After all, he who must not be named did great things. Terrible, yes, but great. Harry shivered. He wasn't sure he liked Mr. Ollivander too much. He paid the seven gold galleons for his wand. Mr. Ollivander bowed them from his shop. The late afternoon sun hung low in the sky as Harry and Hagrid made their way back down diagonally. Back through the door, back through the wall. Back to the a leaky cauldron, now empty. <clears throat> Harry didn't speak at all as they walked down the road. He didn't even notice how much people were gawking at them on the underground, laden as they were with all their funny-shaped packages. With the snowy owl asleep in its cage on Harry's lap, up another escalator out into the Paddington station, Harry only realized where they were when Hagrid tapped him on the shoulder. Got time? I've had a bite to eat before your, your train leaves, he said. He bought Harry a hamburger and they sat down on plastic seats to eat them. Harry kept looking around. Everything looked so strange somehow. You're right, Harry. You're very quiet, said Hagrid. Harry wasn't sure he could explain. He had just had the best birthday of his life, and yet he chewed his hamburger, trying to find the words. Everyone thinks I'm special, he said at last. All those people in the leaky cauldron, Professor Quirrell, Mr. Ollivander, but I don't know anything about magic at all. How can they expect great things? I'm famous, and I can't even remember what I'm famous for. I don't know what happened when the world, uh, sorry, I mean the night my parents died. Hagrid leaned across the table. Behind the wild beard and eyebrows, he wore a very kind smile. Don't you worry, Harry. You'll learn fast enough. Everyone starts at the beginning at Hogwarts. You'll be just fine. Just be yourself. I know it's hard. You've been singled out. And that's always hard. But you'll have a great time at Hogwarts, I did, still do. As a matter, as a matter of fact, Hagrid helped Harry onto the train. That would take him back to the Dursleys. Uh, then they handed him an envelope. Your ticket for Hogwarts, he said. First uh, uh, September, King's Cross, it's all on your ticket. Any problems with the Dursleys, uh, send me a letter with uh, your owl. She know where to find me. See you soon, Harry. Train pulled out of the station. Harry wanted to watch Hagrid until he was out of sight. He rose in his seat and pressed his nose. 
against the window, but he blinked and Hagrid had gone. The end.